When this little girl hugs her beloved dog just before he's about to be put down, she has no idea what is going to happen next. Suddenly, the vet screams that something is wrong, picks up the dog, and runs out of the room, leaving everyone absolutely shocked. The vet asked Lily to move away from Max so that she could take one last look at the sweet golden retriever. The room was heavy with anxiety and grief at the imminent death of the dog, but they had no other choice, or so they thought. The vet took her time looking Max over from top to bottom one last time. When she got to his head, she stopped suddenly. She gently grasped Max's face and lifted it up to hers. She looked intensely into both of his eyes, back and forth. Then, before anyone could ask what she was doing, she gasped and screamed, Something is terribly wrong! Sarah and Tom were bewildered by what they had just heard, but before they could respond, the petite vet picked up Max like he was a feather and whisked him out of the room. Lily screamed and ran after her best friend only to be stopped by the veterinary staff. Where was she taking her best friend? What was wrong with him? Sarah and Tom racked their brains trying to figure out what had just happened. They had gone through all the motions to help Max and get him in the care he needed. What could possibly have changed? Had they missed something? How was Lily going to take this? Max was her world. She had just come to terms with the fact that he was going to die. Lily's parents, Sarah and Tom, had begun to notice Max's decline about two months ago. It started subtly. A limp in his step, a sudden reluctance to play fetch, and an uncharacteristic lethargy. Sarah first chalked it up to the changing weather, thinking maybe Max had pulled a muscle or was simply getting older. But when the days turned into weeks and Max's condition worsened, they knew something was wrong. They were hoping that little four-year-old Lily wouldn't notice too much, but they were mistaken. She quickly caught on to the fact that her best friend was not okay. He wasn't his usual self. For her to notice, they knew there was something terribly wrong, so they made the decision to get Max checked out. Tom made the call to the vet. The appointment was set for a Friday afternoon, and the family hoped for good news. Maybe Max just needed some rest or a different diet. But when they brought him in, the atmosphere in the clinic felt heavy. Dr. Jacobs, their regular vet, was on vacation, so a new, young vet named Dr. Emily Harris greeted them. Dr. Harris performed a thorough examination, her brow furrowing as she checked Max's vitals and observed his behavior. His case didn't seem to be very straightforward at all. What Tom had thought was going to be routine checkup had quickly turned into a marathon of testing, with each additional test making them more and more anxious. After several hours of this, the vet emerged from her office with a grave look on her face. Without too many pleasantries, she delivered the heartbreaking news. Max had a terminal illness, a rare form of cancer that had spread too far to be treated. In fact, the treatment that existed was still in its trial form, meaning there were very few options available to them. The words hung in the air, suffocating the family with their weight. Sarah and Tom exchanged devastated glances. They had to make the agonizing decision to end Max's suffering. When they had brought him in that morning, this was the last thing they thought they were going to have to do. They were caught quite off guard by it all. Luckily, the vet was very understanding of it all. Dr. Harris very sympathetically explained the process, assuring them that it would be peaceful and painless. She assured them that in this case, they really were doing the best thing they could for Max. The alternative would be a suffering that they surely didn't want for their beloved pup. So, with broken hearts, they scheduled the appointment for the following Monday, giving the family the weekend to say their goodbyes. One of the biggest stressors was going to be trying to explain it to poor Lily. She was pretty intelligent for a four-year-old, however, it was still a lot for her to understand. Of course, she didn't fully understand what was happening when they sat her down to explain. But she could definitely tell something wasn't right. She saw her parents' sadness and felt the shift in the household's mood, but her young mind couldn't grasp the concept of death. She only knew that Max was sick and that something was terribly wrong. She clung on to Max more that weekend. The poor golden retriever was smothered in love, not that he was complaining at all. They fed him his favorite treats, took him for long drives in the car. It was very sweet the way he hung his head out the window, sniffing out the scenery as they drove. For Tom and Sarah, it was the end of an era, an abrupt one at that. They had gotten Max just after they got married. He was essentially their first child in a way. They had hoped that he would grow old and be by Lily's side the whole way. 
trying to shift away from that mindset was definitely heartbreaking. On Monday morning, the family gathered in the living room, their hearts heavy. Max lay on his favorite blanket, his once bright eyes dull and tired. Lily curled up next to him, her small body pressed against his. Is Maxie going to get better, Mommy? She asked, her voice filled with innocent hope. Sarah felt sick to her stomach. How do you explain to a little girl that her best friend was going to be leaving and never coming back? Sarah knelt down and stroked Lily's hair. Max is very sick, sweetie. I know, Mommy, but won't the doctor make him better? Just like when I got sick, the doctor always makes me feel better. Lily responded hopefully. Sarah sighed. Yes, my love, but the doctor's treatment is going to be a bit different to what you get. Max is going to a place where he won't hurt anymore, but we'll always love him and remember him. Tears welled in Lily's eyes and she hugged Max tightly. I love you, Maxie, she whispered. The drive to the vet was somber. Max sat in the back seat with Lily, his head resting on her lap. She stroked his fur the entire way, her tears soaking into his coat. She began to tell him a story she had concocted about how he was going to visit the fairies in her storybook and that one day she would visit too. Sarah sobbed quietly in the front of the car listening to her daughter. Everything about the situation just felt so wrong. How were they going to carry on after Max? He was going to leave a massive hole in their household and family. Slowly, the car pulled up to the veterinary clinic. Looking at the entrance, they saw the sweet vet waiting for them. She had a very sympathetic expression on her face. She and her staff helped the family bring Max into the clinic. He was struggling to walk now and in need of any help he could get. The family was led to a quiet, private room. Sarah and Tom tried to hold back their tears as they prepared to say their final goodbyes. Lily watched the adults for prompts of what to do. When the staff placed Max on the floor, Sarah encouraged her to go and sit with him. Without a moment's hesitation, she sat on the floor with her best friend, hugging him tightly. Please don't go, Maxie, she pleaded. Dr. Harris gave them a moment and stood against the wall. Suddenly, Lily turned to her and pleaded to her, Please, do something. I don't want to lose my best friend. The poor vet was evidently moved by the little girl's plea. She gently approached. We'll do one last check, just to make sure, she said, her voice soft. She slowly began to examine Max again, her hands moving with practiced care. She started at his tail, slowly making his way up his body. She squeezed his legs, palpated his stomach, and tried to feel everywhere to see if she had missed anything. She made her way up to his head and examined his mouth and massaged behind his ears. As she looked into Max's eyes, she suddenly paused, her expression shifting from sadness to shock. Without warning, she scooped Max up and bolted down the corridor. Sarah and Tom stood startled. Lily immediately began crying. Where was she going? What had she seen? Coming to his senses and regaining control of his body, Tom got up suddenly. Wait, what are you doing? Tom shouted, chasing after her. He followed her down the winding hallways of the clinic, desperate to catch up. She knew the building better than him. Before he could catch up, she ducked behind a staff-only door. Tom wasn't going to go back to his family empty-handed. He banged on the door with his fist, calling for answers. A veterinary nurse opened the door for him to see the doctor. Give me a minute, I need to check something, Dr. Harris called back, urgency in her voice. Tom slowly made his way back to his wife and daughter waiting anxiously in the little room. He explained what had happened and told them not to worry, even though he was severely anxious inside. They were then visited by a staff member who led them back to the reception waiting area and encouraged them to wait patiently. They explained that as soon as they could, they would come and give them updates on Max and what was going on. The family huddled together in the waiting room, confusion and fear mingling in their hearts. Lily clung to her mother, her tears flowing freely. Why did the daughter take Maxie, Mommy? Sarah tried to soothe her daughter, but she had no answers. They waited, the minutes stretching into agonizing hours. It felt like an eternity. What were they going to tell Lily after such a traumatic goodbye? If Max wasn't going to make it, they needed to know sooner rather than later. After three long hours, finally Dr. Harris returned, cradling Max in her arms. Her face was a mixture of relief and excitement. The family were cautiously optimistic. Based on Dr. Harris's body language, they felt they could hope a little. I'm so sorry for the scare, she said breathlessly, but I needed to be sure. 
I saw something in his eyes that made me need to just run a few more tests. What I found out, you'll be very happy to hear. Sarah and Tom hugged Lily in glee and waited in anticipation to hear what she had to say. Dr. Harris continued, Max has a very rare illness that mimics the symptoms of terminal cancer. It's called Addison's disease and it's manageable with the right treatment. The family stared at her stunned. You mean he's not dying? Sarah asked, her voice trembling. Dr. Harris shook her head. No, he's not. With medication and regular monitoring, Max can live a long, happy life. Tears of joy and relief flowed freely now. Sarah and Tom hugged each other tightly, their hearts soaring. Lily's eyes lit up with hope. Maxie can stay with me? She asked, her voice small but filled with joy. At hearing this, everyone else began crying even harder. The innocence of the little girl made the happiness they felt all that much more impactful. Dr. Harris smiled warmly with tears in her eyes. Yes, Lily, Maxie can stay with you, but you're going to have to take good care of him, okay? You can be his doctor at home and make sure he takes his medicines every day, okay? Lily's smile beamed ear to ear. Yes, I can do that. The family gathered around Max, showering him with love and kisses. Lily hugged him tightly, her heart bursting with happiness. I love you, Maxie, she whispered again, this time with a smile. With the little energy Max had, he wagged his tail back, showing the love for his family. Over the next few weeks, Dr. Harris worked closely with the family to develop a treatment plan for Max. The regimen included daily medication, regular checkups, and a special diet. Max responded well to the treatment, his energy slowly returning and the sparkle coming back to his eyes. The ordeal had brought the family closer together, their bond strengthened by the near loss of their beloved pet. They were grateful for every moment they had with Max. On his new regimen, he was showing great improvements every day. The family couldn't help but count their blessings that he had been given a second chance at life. All the small tasks they used to do with him were now so much more cherished than before. The family relished in the simple joys of playing fetch, going for walks, and snuggling on the couch with their best buddy. Sarah and Tom often reflected on the experience, realizing how close they had come to losing Max. They were thankful for Dr. Harris's keen observation and quick action. Without her, they might have made a decision they would have regretted forever. Lily, true to her word, took on the role of Max's little caretaker, reminding her parents about his medication and making sure he had plenty of water. She loved brushing his fur and playing gentle games with him. The bond between them grew even stronger. Lily promised him every day that she would take care of him well, and she didn't miss a day. Every day she was on her parents' case to ensure that he had his food and his medication exactly when he needed it. Inspired and humbled by her misdiagnosis of Max, Dr. Harris turned her attention to ensuring that other vets were aware of her experience. She began to advocate for better diagnostic training for veterinarians, ensuring that other families wouldn't have to face the same fear and uncertainty. She also started a support group for pet owners dealing with chronic illnesses, providing them with resources and a sense of community. Tom and Sarah were avid supporters and members of the group, making quite a few friends who had gone through something similar to them. The family often visited Dr. Harris, and not just for Max's checkups, but to express their gratitude. They knew they were lucky to have found a vet who cared so deeply and was so thorough in her work. Dr. Harris had given them more than just a few extra years with Max. She had given them hope and the reminder to cherish every moment. As the years passed, Max continued to thrive under the family's care. He and Lily grew up together, their bond unbreakable. They had weathered a storm that had threatened to tear them apart, emerging stronger and more connected than ever. What a beautiful story of hope! How would you have reacted if this happened to your dog? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time.